And uh, you're watching the AM show. We've got a special program coming up be because uh, we're actually marking the death of Nanase Oforiata. The first is the 75th anniversary. Uh, and we know something historic is also going to happen today because the tomb for Sage to the second uh, will be in Achim Abuakwa later this morning. My guest for us to talk about uh, the history of this, what this means what this symbolizes is Professor Kwame Ose Kwating, he's Vice Dean, Faculty of Arts, University of Cape Coast. Uh, good morning to you. Thank you so much for, for being here. Thank you, Mama Via Boaji. <laughs> and congratulations on being um, the Vice Dean. Thank you very yeah, much. Because we've known you as the head of the, the yeah, history I'm, department. I'm still the head of the history department. Mm. You can hold the two uh, positions simultaneously. Okay. All right. Um, so let, let's talk about uh, the 75th anniversary of the the, uh, the passing of uh, Sir Furiata the first. Okay. What does this whole event mean? What should we know about it? Well, it is significant because most Ghanaians, contemporary Ghanaians who haven't done history, do not know of the exploits of uh, Nana Sir Furiata the first, the roles that he played as a legislator as a statesman, as a, a, a chief, and uh, as an educator. Mm. So I think it is important because on uh, Ghana history f since 1987 had taken a nosedive. It's, it's now uh, il il uh, an elective subject. So the interest in Ghana mm. history had waned. Yeah. Most Ghanaian students have gone through secondary and university education without learning about history of Ghana. So you don't know what has happened in the past. And the past has relevance for today. And so uh, in relaunching or celebrating the 70th anniversary, uh, 75th anniversary of Nanase of Oriata, and then also relaunching a book written on him, mm. to me, is very, very significant because it is going to enable Ghanaians who don't know much about this man to read about him because Ghanaians are curious. So some of them will be asking questions. What was it? What is it about this man that after 75 years of his death, somebody will want us to celebrate him? Mm -hmm. Somebody will want us to read about him. So curious minds will try to read about him. Mm. And so they will get to know more about the man. Nanase mm. the first. Most so of let, the let me redirect that contempt, question uh, to you, Prof. Yeah. Uh, what is it about him that we should know after 75 years? Why well, is this such a big deal? It's a big deal for the simple reason that this man, it was during his time as the king of, uh, of Achim Abuakwa that, in fact, Achim gained prominence so far as uh, modern Ghanaian uh, colonial history is concerned. Mm. He, if you, 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 you care, you see that most of his grandchildren and children were highly educated. He himself was an educated chief. You know, most of our chiefs were not educated, they were illiterate. And he was among the early literate chiefs in, Ga uh, in, in the Gokus. So he took the trouble upon himself to. Uh, teach his children or educate his children. Mm. So he promoted education. Apart from that, he also had a good relationship with the colonial authorities and helped in ensuring that laws, he, he was a legislator, he was invited into the, legislative assemb uh, into the legislative assembly and then also the council of chiefs at that time. And he, he, he helped in the passage of ordinances that governed the, 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 the country at the time. Do you get me? Mm. And then also, they collaborated with the authorities at that time to promote peace and harmony. And during the World War, uh, World War I, he also, with other, the, the support of other chiefs, helped in, in, the, in providing support to the British colonial authorities by giving money, buying aeroplanes and what have you to support the war effort, which eventually uh, ended in, in, in victory for the, for the British. And so the Germans couldn't overcome us. He did a whole lot of things. And 
if you look at the fact that Nana Oforiata was also in the thick of affairs in most of the things that happened, educational projects that happened during his time, or social uh, projects that happened during his time. He contributed to them by way of uh, debates in the Legislative Assembly. Uh, Gorgesberg built Kolebu Hospital, Achimotescu, and all these things. And he was part of the chiefs who supported the colonial government mm. at that time, mm. and more or less, he, he, he was on the forefront. So okay. on the whole, you will see that the man was a great leader, mm. no matter. But, but, but did the people see at the time his greatness? Normally, you see, people may not understand you at the time that you may be in power, mm. but history may judge you after you have left the scene. It could be many, many years, because most of the information about you will come out, mm. and people will now sit down critically, look at the data, analyze them, mm -hmm. and then value them and see whether you were a great man or mm. you were a failure. Do you get me? But from what we have studied about the man, what you have known about the man, indeed, if those, his contemporaries didn't see him as a great man, mm. today, historians have seen that he was indeed a great mm. man. Mm. He, 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 he was somebody who, who, who contributed his bit towards the socio-economic development of the country during mm. his time. Mm. We're, we're talking about this day and we're looking ahead also because we know that the Asantehene will be in Achimebuakwa. What does that mean? Yeah, the meeting of Asantehene and Ochehene Osajifo Amotia of Urupenin today is very, very significant in the history of Ghana because it is going to end over three centuries old intense rivalry that ever existed between the Achims and the Ashantis. You know, historically, mm. the Achims and Ashantis had been rivals and the relationship that had existed between them started from the time Ashanti was emerging as a, a state in the forest belt. Both Ashanti and Achim are kingdoms that emerge in the forest belt. Achim originally, Achim comprised Kotoku, Bosome, and Abuakwa. And they were originally in the Adanse area, which is seen as the cradle of the Akans. But because of political instability at the time, mm. the Achems decided to move away from that place. They migrated and, uh, and moved to where they are now. Some of them were in the, the Kotoku in particular, were in the area you call Asante Achem. And when Asante was also under the dominion of Dentura, and in 1860, uh, in 1699, between 1699 and 1701, Asante and Dentra went to war. Ashanti and some other vassals of Dentra, like Chufu, like Wasa, and then uh, Sefi, formed a coalition mm. and decided to rebel against Dentra. They did it successfully and succeeded. But in that war against Dentra, it was the Achim that supported the Dentra against Ashanti. Okay. And as, uh, Achim didn't want Ashanti to emerge as a, a nation state because it felt that for political and economic reasons or, and commercial reasons, Ashanti was going to compete with mm. Achim. So this was all more of a power struggle? Power struggle at that time. And subsequently, subsequent to that, Ashanti emerged victorious and subsequent to that, we saw a situation where Ashanti Osetu II, the first, Ashanti you know, Osetu II, the first, waging war against Achim Kotoku to punish them for supporting the intra, mm. which resulted in the death of Osei Tutu and most uh, of the Ashanti uh, warriors at the time. And it created a state of instability in Ashanti itself for three consecutive years until Otunfu Opokuwari came to the throne in 1720. And then he also de decided to av avenge the death of the uncle, okay. and, and he was a great warrior. He, he's called a champion, 
and he 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 he, he ex extended the territorial aggrandizement of Ashanti. But the mm -hmm. first thing that he did was to avenge the death of the uncle, and Ashanti waged series of wars against the Achim. Uh, this forced the Kotoku people to move away from where they were in Asante Achim area to mm. Achim or that. And uh, uh, Asante now annexed that area, Asante Achim area, and gave the people the name okay. Asante Achim. They oh. added Asante to the Achim, that those who remain, who didn't go, and mm. then also brought royal royals from Asante mm. to come and rule some of the towns and villages and settle among the Achims to more or less integrate them into the Ashanti uh, society and kingdom. Mm. Then, subsequently, during the time of uh, Ashanti Nikusi Ubu Odum and Osei you realize that Ashantis continue to fight the uh, Achim together. That's Kotoku Bosumi and Mabuakwa. By this time, you see Abuakwa playing a leading role. Mm. And Asante, uh, Abuakwa chiefs like uh, Bakwanti, Pubi, and Obrikran all fought with the Ashantis and eventually Ashanti defeated them. But then they formed coalitions, mm. the Achim formed coalitions with the vassals of Ashanti like Chufu, like Sefi and then uh, Wasa. And even with Ada and uh, Ge, you are ever so you know Ada and uh, Ge, Ge. And even appealed to the Alafin of Oyo at mm. one time to come to their aid and even the Krobo. So they were fighting among them for a protracted warfare existed between them and mm. and, the, and and so the hostility lingered on and it was an intense one that's why scholars like finn describe the relationship between the ashanti and achim then as what intense hostility okay yeah. okay okay uh my guest is professor kwame osei kwating from the university of cape because uh he's a history professor he's vice dean faculty of arts at the university of cape coast and we're learning about the relationship between the achims and the ashantis as you may well know by now otun said to the second uh will be in uh will be with the ochi in it today and it's been uh, described as an historic event uh, and this, we're learning that is going to end many, 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 many years, decades of hostility. Uh, so it's interesting that we're learning the history of this, of this whole. But so how come, you know, they were all able to join one political party? Politics seemed to, uh, it got them together somehow. Because we see the, the Achims and we see the Ashantis all in one political party. You see, in this world, you must not have a permanent friend and a permanent enemy. Looking at the circumstances at the time, you can change your mind. They say that it's only a fool who doesn't change his mind. Mm. I mean, the Achim and the Ashantis at the point realize that they are very survivor in the country that we call today Ghana was being threatened. And so they have to forge an alliance so that they could what resist it and then could also compete for political power in this country mm. when uh, partisan party politics emerge in this country so and and the people who played that role were jb dankwa who was member of the big six and then uh, Pauli and others they were able to then convince the asante Hene of the time who took force uh, ajima prempe because they saw that the CPP government, led, then led by Nkrumah, who had socialist inclinations, was going to sort of lord, over, uh, lord it over them and tyrannize them, and they didn't want that. Mm. Having been sovereigns over years, I mean, the Ashanti and the Achims, having been sovereign over, uh, over years, they didn't want a situation. So there was one thing that a common factor that united them together. Mm. So that explains why. They have to come together. Mm. Yeah. But we know the power that Otunfo yields. We know the power that what he commands as well. If you take Ochimang and Asante Mang, which one is more powerful? I think you hadn't asked me this question. Because I don't want to uh, uh, I don't want to double in that politics mm. that goes on. In this country, this one is great, this one is that. I am an Ashanti myself. Do you get me? Okay. 
but then if you want to talk about greatness and power in terms of territorial expanse, in terms of wealth and what have you, then and then in terms of uh, number of chiefs under the authority of Asante, number of chiefs who swear oath of allegiance to Asante, mm -hmm. then definitely, uh, in, in, in comparison with that of Ocheshene, then definitely Asante. So let, let me ask you this. The relationship between the two, Otunfo and the Ocheshene, seem to be, because we recently we saw them play golf together, for instance, and the pictures were widely circulated. A lot of people were happy about it. Who stands to gain the most? with this reunion, if you like? First and foremost, I would say that the country Ghana stands to gain most because it is going to foster peace, tranquility among the Achems and then the Ashantis. Let me say two leading Akan group of people mm. within the country. So Ghana stands to gain most. And then the, the, the two people, the Achem and then the Ashanti, will mm. also benefit from it. So. That is what I can say with respect mm. to this. Is this, are we going to see this as, uh, you know, we love the pictures on all when we see the two together. Uh, we're counting down to their meeting today. We're excited that Utunfo is leaving Kumasi and, 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 uh, and, and going to uh, Abuakwa. Is this just on paper? Is this just in pictures? Or we will see them do more together? Well, I'm not privy to the programs that they have for this mm. meeting. Yeah, but I, I get it. I'm not even asking about today's event. I'm yeah. asking about going further yeah. uh, in the future, the kind of so, relationship. Is it just taking pictures, visiting each other, no, or I we think, will see some more collaborations? Uh, this, the previous one, the first meeting, mm. and the reciprocal visit by Asante Hene to mm. Achima Buakwa today, sort of uh, lays the basis. It's becoming the stepping stone for future cordial relationship between Ashanti and uh, uh, the Achim Abuakwes. And I think that going forward from today, nobody can make political mischief of Achim Mafia, Ashanti, Fakta. Do you, you think it's going to end because the two have come together? Sure. Now, what will be your basis for saying that? The, I have a problem with you. And today, you decided to bury the hatchet and forge ahead as friends. We forget about the past. We put the past behind us. The past is only there to guide us so that we don't repeat the mistakes of the past. Mm -hmm. So history had guided them. They saw what has happened, how bitterness can destroy you, how enmity can even allow your enemy to come and take your possession away. Do you get me? Because if there is enmity between you, there will be no unity, and the enemy exploits on that. So. Going forward, this is going to help one build the Danko Budija tradition, if you want me to go that way. Mm. Because now Ashantis and Achems are going to see themselves as more brothers than before. Suspicion and mistrust will now be eradicated. Because hitherto, there was suspicion and mistrust among these people. If you want me to illustrate this, I can use 1979 and then subsequently 1998 and even quite recently, as examples, mm. 79, even though Achem and Ashanti belong to the U, predominantly belong to the UP tradition, but because of misunderstanding and suspicion and mistrust, the tradition split into two. You have uh, this man, Vito Usu, leading PFP, and then uh, Pauli, leading UNC. And when they went to the ele general elections in 1979, they lost to Liman, somebody who was even not known much in the country. Do you get me? He, 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 he was a novice in Ghanaian politics, but he, he, he won. And they learned a big lesson. I think it is that that has given a Philip to today's meeting, because mm -hmm. subsequently they saw that uh, uh, I am a Casfordian. I was a, uh, I am an alumni, uh, alumnus of, uh, of Casford. Mm -hmm. Our motto, uh, one of the songs of our motto, divided uh, before United we stand. Do you get me? They have realized that divided they will fall and then united they will stand. Mm. And so subsequently they decided never to let that happen again. So this is rather going to strengthen that resolve never to be uh, divided mm. politically again as it happened 
1979. Do you get me? And then they also want to put a stop to uh, political opponents of MPP always making reference to Achim Mafia uh, and then the Ashanti factor and all those things. Mm. So now, if anybody from Ashanti decides to contest for uh, the uh, uh, presidency or any position in MPP, mm -hmm. nobody will have a justification in saying that the Achems are suspicious of Ashantis or Ashanti uh, and vice versa. That thing will, will be buried forever. But, but people would always look at the people the president, for instance, surrounds himself with and make that conclusion. You can't take away the fact that people will still my, think my, that there's a certain my, mafia. My, 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 my dear sister, you would, will do the same thing. If you allow me and I'm to go into the politics of this country, from Osadi for Dr. Kwame Nkrumah up to today, every leader we have had during Osadi for Dr. Nkrumah's time, most of the people who surrounded him were Nzimas because he came from Nzima. Do you get me? And uh, during Buzia's time, he also had people from uh, Bonahafo and other places who surrounded him. Do you get me? During J.H. Kofu's time, you get the same thing. During Rollins' time, Rollins was accused many times. Have you heard about it? In 1988, there was a public uh, uh, Dankwa Freezer something something uh, lecture, which was delivered by the late Professor uh, Dubuahe, uh, but, uh, and the title was The Ghanaian Sphinx. He accused uh, uh, ex President Rollins who was then fight Lieutenant Jerry John Rollins and the head of state of Ghana, that all the military top hierarchies in this country, chief of defense staff, uh, uh, Air Force commander, uh, IGP, naval commander, and all of them were Evers. He accused him. And uh, General Anokwenu came out to rebut that. So every leader you have had, J.H. Kofor came, was his chief of staff, not an Ashanti, where most of the people around him not Ashanti. So what are people talking about? If a Kufuado comes and we have some attempts around him, in any case, let me ask you, I'm not doing politics, but I'm looking at it from historical perspective. And I let, appreciate that. Let, 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 let me ask you, if you, are, uh, you, as you sit here today, you become a CEO, will you bring someone from Nigeria or from elsewhere to come and, uh, and be your uh, AD camp? you may definitely go for somebody that you trust. Because in this country, people uh, always have suspicion for one another. And because of tribalism, tribalism thrives in this country. Cronyism thrives in this country. Nepotism thrives in this country. Yeah. So people are not uh, confident of other people. They are always suspicious. They mm. think that this person will undermine me. He will leak information. As I sit here today, I have an experience in my own department as HOD. A document was put in a file, which I never knew of, which had never been received and minuted on. But somebody uh, surreptitiously put it in the file and used it as a case. But for the fact that there were no stamps, there were no signatures, because every correspondence must come to me. It must be registered and put in. A, mm. uh, it must be registered in a letter, uh, the letter receiver book, and all these things. And then I myself must see it and minute on it, whatever action that So you would have been framed? I would have been framed. Mm -hmm. So me, I will support everybody who comes to power and does not dispense with people he trusts. Mm. Because in this country, you have to be afraid of a lot of people. They always try, try to sabotage you, pull you down. Mm. Un until this tendency of pulling him down ceases, mm. then these people are justified from Kwame Nkrumah to Nana Kufuado, to okay. surround themselves with people they trust because mm. most people are not trustworthy. So, Prof, you know, we hear a lot of things, uh, not just because I'm a media person, but as an ordinary Ghanaian citizen, we hear things. And some of the things I've heard in the past is, for instance, uh, between the two, the Ochihene and, uh, and the Asantehene, uh, is that they don't meet because and they would always miss each other. And that's planned. Because when they meet, uh, who bows to who? Is there anything like that? Ooh. Is there anything like that? I, 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 I don't know whether uh, this thing really exists. Because so far as I am concerned, when Asante Otunfu Opoku are celebrated the uh, 50th anniversary of the restoration of the uh, Asante Confederacy, she invited Ochechini Kuntukrunku, who 
came to Kumasi and attended the program. And as Antihine Opokuware was, uh, was sitting in his regalia in state. Mm -hmm. And definitely the chiefs who, who came will have to go and pay homage to him, who have to go and greet him. So this thing, I don't think, is borne out by the facts. Mm. Okay. All right, we're still trying to appreciate. And the picture on your screen, that's when uh, the Ochihine actually visited uh, Otunfo. And this is one that the president took with the two. So let me ask you on the back of this picture that's uh, on, on the screen. Is it the president, Nana Adodankwe Kufuado, who's making these two come together? Is it because of the, the type of presidency we have today? I think uh, you have to look at this against the background of a, a statement that Asante Hine made in his palace, Mencia, when John Bordu and uh, Untumi and others visited Mencia Palace and uh, John Bordu introduced himself officially to Otunfo for his blessing that he was going to com uh, contest for the general secretary of MPP. Asante Hine was annoyed because he said he had had information that Gabi Ochreda Cohen and Asante Bidia too were doing uh, everything possible in the seat of government, that is the Jubilee House, to undermine him, Otunfo, and then Asante, uh, Asante Man. And Otunfo did not mean words. He expressed his uh, disgust of what he had heard mm. in public, and it was all over. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, the president, Anna Kufuado, who displayed maturity as a leader, and knowing that that was not actually the fact, went to Asante Hine and told him that he allayed his fears that nothing of that sort uh, was happening. And following which, he was able to arrange the meeting between Otunfo in the first uh, Otunfo in Kumase, and they played golf, as you, you, you just shown, mm. and then also the, uh, uh, between Otunfo and Ochehene, mm. and then this is being reciprocated today mm. in uh, Oforupeni Fi Achima Buakwa. In fact, it tells you the kind of leadership that Nana Kufuado is providing this country. You see, he's a good leader. It is a good leader who seeks peace. It is a good leader who seeks peace. If it had been any other person, and indeed if it is true that this Achim Mafia thing exists, if it is indeed true that Ashanti and Achim are always trying to undo the other, mm -hmm. he would have ignored it and, and allowed it to fester. But he didn't do that. He quickly ran into I mean, you quickly intervene and then prove to all and sundry that it is not true, that it is the machination of uh, uh, enemies of MPP and not actually in, in a, 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 a reality. Mm. So I think Nana, has, Nana Kufado, the president, has done well. I must commend him for that uh, effort. So essentially what we, are, what we are seeing today is all as a result of uh, work done by the president. Sure. So nobody can take away the credit from the president because Asante Hine came out openly. So everybody can attest to what mm. happened. Mm. Obviously, he was annoyed by what he has said, whether that was true or not. Mm. Nobody can say it. But the president, being a man he is, and knowing that that is not the case, quickly intervened and went to, and went mm. to uh, Otunfo and was able to facilitate the meeting between Asanteman and uh, Ochiman. To me, that is what is significant. Mm. All right. Uh, now, uh, Prof, you stay with us a little longer. Uh, Ohim Interia is my colleague in Kumasi. He's been interacting with a monarch historian, Osei Bunsu, Safo Kantanka, who says, the visit of the Asante Hino Tunfo Seiti to the second to Ochimang is a step to reconcile the two people. We've heard of Achim and Asante um, rivalry. So if today uh, we are coming together, whatever has happened for us to come together as brothers, it is, of course, a great event and a major historical event. Mm. Has this happened before? Or maybe this is the first time the Ashanti King is visiting Achim Abuakwa to be specific? Uh, this is not the first time uh, Ashanti King has gone to Abuakwa. 
But what makes it more significant is the fact that this very visit is um, it's so important a visit that we all attentions are on. In the olden days, each time an Asantehine visited a Buakwa, it was not just a visit, but it was war. Achim Abuakwa, to be specific, has always been on the opposing side of Asante since time immemorial. When we talk of since time immemorial, we are talking of, or we're talking about the days of uh, when Asante defeated Dendra. It is clear in history that all the three Achims have Dendra to fight Ashanti, when Ashanti wanted her independent from Dendra. Not only that, almost all wars that Ashanti fought, Achim helped the opposing side against the Ashanti kingdom. This is why people think that there is a rivalry between the Achims and the Ashantis. Now, if you look at the caliber of people that make up the Achim society and the caliber of people that make up the Asante society, there is virtually no difference between them, cultural-wise, spiritual-wise, every, virtually everything, physically, mentally, spiritually, in all spheres of life, our way of life is the same our names, our language, it will be very difficult for anybody to differentiate between an Asante and an Achim. Very, very difficult. Unless, of course, even among themselves, they cannot differentiate. Unless an Asante man tells an Achim man, I am an Asante, he sees the Asante man as an Achim and vice versa. There are about five or so who are very much alike. The Dentura, the Achim, the Asante, the Asin, the Chifu. Speak the same language, the same culture, the same tradition. But what happened was that some years back, before the Dentura Asante war, Achim was uh, a power among the Akan community. There were three major powers. Achim, Akum, and Dendra. What happened was that Achim was so powerful in those days that it overthrew the power of Akum. So that there remained only two major powers within the Akan kingdom, Dendra and Achim. So for Asante to overthrow Dendra, the remaining opposition was Achim. Indeed, in the end, Achim was overthrown by Ashanti, and all those states that were overthrown by Ashanti became part of the Ashanti kingdom. In 19, uh, sorry, in, in 1742, uh, that is Opoku under uh, the king of Ashanti, Opokuare. There was a major war between the Ashantis and the Achims. Before that war, Ashanti had waged a vengeance war against Achim for helping the Dentra people. All the three Achims. We have Achim Abuakwa, Achim Kutuku, Achim Bosome. There is even a fourth Achim which is within the Ashanti kingdom. That is Asante Achim. But the three have always rebelled led by uh, Achim Abuakwa, where the Asantehene is going tomorrow or paying him a visit tomorrow. Now, you can imagine that somebody who reigns would always like to remain, even if he doesn't uh, conquer others, he doesn't want to be conquered. So this is what actually happened between the Achim Abuakwa and Asante. In the end, it came to an end. So between 18, uh, between 1742 under Opokuare and uh, 1831 under Osea Okutu, that is 
Achim was part, virtually part of the Ashanti kingdom. Yes, sir, we, we are talking about the, uh, the war or history of the Ashanti and the Achims in the 18th century. Uh, let's go back to 17th century where uh, an important incident happened between the Achims and the, the uh, Ashantis. I'm referring you to the 1717th war uh, between the Achims and Ashantis that led to the death of Osei the first, King Osei Tutu the first. Can, can you walk me through what actually happened? Because there's a uh, belief that the Ashanti king is not allowed uh, to cross River Pra because that is a taboo. That is what a lot of people or many people do believe. I, I, is that the case? So, as I said earlier, uh, in 1700 to 1701, there was a major war between the Asante people and the Dengira people. What happened is that all the three, the, all the three Achim kingdoms helped Dengira to fight the Ashantis. So after winning the war by the Ashantis over Dengira, what happened was the Ashanti decided to punish all those who helped the Dengira people. And that was 1817 when Ashanti had stayed for more than um, a decade. That is, in 1717, the, the Dentra War ended in 1701. So they waited until 1717 to wage a war against all the three Achims. Uh, before getting to the battlefield, the, the war was targeted first and foremost against Achim Kutuku. Indeed, there is no Pra River in Achim Abuakwa. So the Achim Abuakwa, it can be, it is very clear that they came to help the Kutuku people. So in the process, before getting to the battlefield, the king of Ashanti, who was in Palanquin, riding in Palanquin to the war front, was um, hit by a max man's bullet, wherever it came from, either from the sky, from the from the from the treetop, or wherever it was unknown, but he was hit. The body was carried hurriedly back home, and uh, Mampoyene took over. That gave him the title Inusiahene. He was leading um, a group of people who had lost their father. It is believed in Ashanti history that the Ashanti went forward to win that war. But having killed the king of Ashanti, still the next king of Ashanti decided to revenge. And that was uh, Opoku Arikatechi. That was Opoku Arikatechi. That was 18, that was 17, uh, 80, 1742. That was 1742. So it is true that uh, the king of Asante, Ose Tutu Opimswo, or Opimswo Ose Tutu, lost his life whilst going to fight the Achims, whilst crossing the River Pra. Now, this Pra River is not found anywhere in Achimabuakwa. It is found in Achimkutuku. If any credit at all, it should not be given to uh, those who don't have the Pra on their land. Those who have the pra on their land know the terrain. They know the geography of the area. So they, that is where uh, the whole thing happened. Uh, it is believed by most people that because Asantehine Ose Tutu died whilst crossing the pra, or was shot whilst crossing the pra, Ose Tutu the first. So, no Asantehine should cross the Pra. This is not so. It is not so because after that war, it is very clear that most Ashanti kings crossed the Pra to go and fight. All that is important for the Ashanti king to do in crossing any river, not only the Pra River, is to offer prayer and then sacrifice. Ship and other um, animals before crossing 
whichever river, including the River Pra. So, in uh, King Osebonsu of Asante crossed the River Pra to go and fight uh, in Cape Coast. The King Osei Awakoto crossed the River Pra to go and fight at Katamansu, which is Accra. And on all this, you have to cross the Pra to get to Accra, cross the Pra to get to uh, Cape Coast. There was an Amashanti king that is, uh, who also crossed to the uh, Volta to go and fight. In all cases, going from Ashanti to the Volta, you have to cross the Pra. So why would somebody say that Asante Hine does not cross the Pra? There is something Asante Hine has to do in crossing every river, including the River Pra. Okay. Uh, why would the Ashanti king decided to visit a rival because, yes, uh, Achimwe Buakwa played a role. Anytime there was a war between the, uh, whether the Kotoku or the Bosome or which any other state, any other state, the Achimwe Buakwa state play a role, will give support uh, to the opposing uh, faction or the opposing side. Why would the Ashanti Hine, say to the second, decide to pay a visit? in this modern era, to Achim Abuakwa? Well, indeed, uh, before uh, 1831, Achim Abuakwa and all the Achims and almost the whole Ghana was part of the Ashanti Kingdom. I wouldn't say under Ashanti Kingdom. They were part of it. They had their own states, governed their own states, except that it was something like a union. So there was no an Asante ruling other people. It was making them part of them. So if you were part of Asante kingdom, you had your own uh, uh, rules, culture, and tradition. You had your own, you chose your own king, you chose your own chief, you did everything on your own. All that was important was that whenever Ashanti moved, then your role as part of the kingdom is what have to show. You have to play your role. If it is supplying soldiers to go and fight a war somewhere, or if it is paying a, uh, a tribute to the king of Ashanti, swearing off of allegiance to a, one person who has been selected to lead the whole of the Ashanti kingdom. That is all that was expected of you. What happened was that in 1831, 1826, there was a major war at Katamansu, that is Accra. All the coastal states together, led by um, three white nations, that is Britain, um, Netherlands, and then Denmark. They were at the forefront of the war. They planned and executed the war. All that they did was to bring together all the coastal states whom they found as one-time enemies to Ashanti uh, on their side. And they fought the Ashanti, defeated Ashantis. And in, uh, after the war, Britain decided, all the whites decided to go out of this part of our, our world that they can no more live with the Ashanti people because of the many attempts on them or many wars that was, were going on in, the, in, the, in this area. So at one British called McLean, Captain George McLean, was left behind. He was a merchant, but he had plenty of knowledge in law and um, other things, surveying and all other things. What he did was that he tried to organize the coastal people into one state, one, king, one uh, nation, and called it Cape uh, Gold Coast. Then in 1831, that is uh, some close to a decade, after the Katamansu War, signed a pact with the king of Ashanti, who was then uh, called Oseyao Akuto, that from that day when they signed the bond, 
Asante should remain behind the pra and then the coastal people, including Accra, um, Anglon, and all the other states behind the voter, including uh, Denchra, Sefi, Wasa, Awin, all were behind this, was taken away from the Ashanti and given to the, the, the Gold Coast. So they formed that into the Gold Coast. So we had two countries within this area, the Gold Coast and Asante. In, at the end of um, 1880, the British, the um, McLean, George McLean, decided to go back home. So the British, the, 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 the British side of, the, of that nation called Gold Coast, that is what is uh, the British side, and the Asante side were two countries. The British side decided that, hey, if these people should go, then we may be in trouble again with Ashantis. So let's sign another pact under Commander Hale, who came to succeed um, McLean. That was the bond of 1844. They signed that pact. But in all these cases, they were still playing the other side against Ashanti. Uh, and that's uh, Osei Bonsu Safo Kantanka speaking there to my colleague Ohemeng Teria. And it's because of the 75th anniversary of the demise of Nanase Oforiata I. Uh, and this relaunch, all this conversation really is in a bit to tell the story of an illustrious kin, the Achim Abuakwa State, uh, launching the 75th anniversary of uh, Nanase Ofori Atta the first, whose reign transformed the lives of the people in the re eastern region, they say, and its environs. Uh, quickly, let me tell you that uh, it's been a month-long celebration uh, highlighting the immense contributions of Nanase Ofori Atta, uh, who has been described as the founder of modern-day Achim Abuakwa to the country. Uh, so there have been various activities. For instance, we've talked about uh, the memorial lecture de delivered by Professor Adufenin, who is a historian. Uh, you know, there was also that book, Relaunch of Achim Abuakwa, 1700 to 1943, from uh, Oforopeni <coughs> to Se Oforiata. It's going to be climaxed with a grand deba at Chebi to be hosted by the Ochihene Osajifo. I'm waiting for a painting with the Asante Hene or two four seats to the second as the special guest of honor. Our eyes are in Ebuakwa today. My guest in studio is Professor Kwame Osei Kwating, who's Vice Dean, Faculty of Arts, University of Cape Coast, and he's also been helping us appreciate a lot of the things that are happening today. It's very interesting history that, unfortunately, Prof, uh, we don't get to study in our schools easily these days. Obviously, you've explained that it's because history is now an elect, el elective, elective subject. subject. So you have to um, decide that you want to learn history. But uh, there are a lot of people learning history today with your experience at, at the University of Cape Coast. Yeah. yeah, because we have so many secondary schools in Ghana. And some of them, those who are doing general arts, most of them are doing the history program. Mm. Yeah. We get a lot of students coming to the university to do history. Under, at the undergraduate level and at the postgraduate too, we do get, a, a year, every year we get about at least two students registering for MPhil mm. or MA and in some cases at most you get about six registering. And so you see that history is not dying. Mm. We, we, we have been able to keep it alive and fortunately for us the current government has decided that history should now be introduced, history of Ghana should now be introduced as a, a core subject in the curriculum. And fortunately, I was made the chairman of the committee and then also okay. subsequently chairman of the National Council for Curriculum and Assessment. We have made a great, done a great job. And so is this going to start, begin like in the next academic year? 
probably next uh, uh, 2019 okay. academic year. So it will become a core subject, just it like so uh, every math, Ghanaian science. Student, yeah, at, every Ghanaian student at the pre-tertiary level will have mm. to do history. Okay. It, as it happens in America and other places. Because if you don't study your history, somebody will even come here and sell you. And mm. you, may, you may not know that somebody is selling you. True. Yeah. True. And also knowledge of the past helps mm. us to correct the mistakes of uh, mm. yesterday and mm. don't repeat them today. Okay. Do you get me? It also makes us patriotic and nationalistic. So history is very relevant. Yeah. And ending our conversation, uh, Abuakwa will not be the same after today's visit sure. uh, from Utumfo. How do we take advantage of our history and our culture in this instance? Yeah. Economically, if we take advantage of our of our history, it will bring a lot of uh, foreign exchange to us. Because this occasion, you get a lot of uh, visitors coming to the place, uh, tourists, and all these people will bring some hard currency, and people who will be selling the either food, the caterers, those who will be selling traditional wares and all that view, they will all get market today. So it will boost the economy. Mm. If you, you study our history and try to organize programs based on history, it's, it's, it's going to help promote our culture. Mm. It's going to uh, help promote our culture as well as also bring an economic benefit to us. And you know, there are so many uses of history, what, some of which I just pointed out. It will make us patriotic. It will uh, make us not repeat the past mistakes that our forebears made and uh, it will also help us become responsible citizens mm. so i think that studying history and then organizing programs that are history related are very very important okay. you shouldn't consign history to the backwaters mm. you should rather be promoting our history america is great russia is great britain is great France is great, all because they have focused on their history. They mm. teach their history. They have not relegated it to the background. Mm. And people who try to consign history to the background are bound to fail mm. because you can never kill the history. The history will continue to triumph because Bible itself is a history. Mm. Quran itself is a history. The other distance is a history. It's other people's history and other people's culture. We have seemed to have embraced other people's history and culture and then relegated ours to the background, mm. which to me is, 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 is a wrong move. So the educational reform of 1987 did not do any good thing to us by making history an elective subject. And it has been responsible for the uh, kind of situation we see today. Most of our children not knowing their culture, disrespecting mm. authorities, not having love for our country, people not ready to die for our country, and doing things that have affected our economy, that have always been creating problems for us. Mm. And I think if you go to history, we take our history, uh, we, 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 we study our history again, I think there are some mistakes that had been committed in the that past. That we will not repeat. That you will not okay. repeat. So finally, and, and um, I guess I'm talking to you now as an Ashanti man, uh, we're in August. What's the biggest event on your calendar? I'm trying to look at... As an Asante? As, yes. Oh. As an Asante mine. I, I, I don't follow those things that uh, Asante calendar and this okay. kind of thing. Because I, I was going to ask, let me tell you where mm. I was going to arrive at. Would we see Ochehene make a trip to Kumasi, to Asante mine? on an occasion similar to what we're witnessing today? Certainly, if he is invited by Asante, mm. Asante Hene. And I know that in future events that Asante Hene may organize, he may extend invitation to. And I, I, I know that in most cases, when they are doing, if, even if it's a funeral or it's a celebration of restoration of Asante Confederacy or the uh, celebration of the installation of a, uh, uh, Asante Hene or anything. They invite all the Amayene from all over the country mm. and vice versa. Anything that happens anywhere, they extend. Because now, Ghanaians see ourselves more as uh, brothers and sisters than as enemies. It used to be that in the past, but not today. Today, you see, there have been intermarriages. You've gone to school together. You have become classmates. I told you off air that my professor, who is my mentor, 
who taught me history. This history he was the one mm -hmm. who taught me. It's Professor Aminumi, and he's an Angloman. Yeah. Do you get me? I was telling you off air. So today, tribalism is something that is consigned to the backwaters, especially with most educated people, mm -hmm. because we see that we are all one people, irrespective of where you are coming from. I'm grateful for your time, Prof. Thank you so much for being here. Professor you are, you Kwame Osei Kwating. Yeah. Uh, and stay with us because we will be coming to you live from Abuakwa as well. Our colleagues uh, on standby, we're looking forward ahead to that great visit. Uh, two, four, six, two, the second in Ochimai today. Stay with us. You're watching the AM show.